Hey, 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 welcome back to another Path of Exile video, and today we're going to be talking about how to make some potentially big profit very quickly when it comes to crafting your flasks. Um, so recently I've been, you know, building my Mage Blood build and it's going really, really well. Um, but during the preparation phase of getting all my flasks in order, I realized that um, purchasing these flasks as I wanted them, such as the perfect tier 1 suffixes with the increased effect prefix, um, it was kind of ridiculous. The prices were, were insane. Um, and then while, while I was crafting, I was also occasionally selling ones that I didn't need that were still good. Like, for example, um, I already have the tier 1 evasion, I already have the tier 1 armor, and then when I was trying to get my attack speed, I was occasionally rolling and, and getting like, oh, this one's tier 1 armor again. I don't need this, but I should, I might as well sell it. And then I would put it up for sale and I was getting spammed for like 30C, 40C. And I eventually just, I, I sold a few more and I realized that some people will, will actually spend, some people will actually pay like 80 chaos to like 100 chaos, sometimes even more for a perfect flask that they need for their build because I guess they just don't want to craft it themselves. I don't know. So here is exactly what I do in order to search for the flask that I'm going to be crafting because the thing about this is when you're using a mage blood, it doesn't actually matter at all what suffix you have on what um, flask. Like I, I could have attack speed on this flask, I could have evasion on this flask, it makes no difference. As long as they're all there, I'm getting the benefits no matter what flask they're on. For that reason, people are going to be very specifically searching for, like for example, if they need a basalt flask with a specific suffix, they're going to be very specifically searching for the flask. So it's really difficult to actually get an idea of like what flask is good at what time in order to craft. So what I went ahead and did was set up my um, better trading thing here with a uh, pre-setup trade, which you can see right here. This is basically all of the suffixes that I am familiar with. People using Mage Bloods like these suffixes. There's probably a few more that I'm not familiar with, but these are basically all of the tier one rolls of all these different good suffixes. And then I also have a um, the prefix for the increased effect. You have to you have to do a 25 out of 25 roll here, or else you'll start getting the reduced effect, which is really strange how that works. And then I put the enkindling orb craft on there as well, with a with the minimum roll for the enkindling orb craft. Now you might think to yourself, like, why would anybody buy it with the Enkindling Orb craft when Enkindling Orbs are so cheap you can just put it on yourself? Hey, listen, I don't know, man. Don't ask me. Maybe maybe these guys just didn't pick up an Enkindling Orb all league or something. I don't know, but um, just having that craft on there seems to raise the value a lot, which is ridiculous because, like I said, Enkindling Orbs are so cheap. Uh, anyways... This is the, the, the great thing about this is that this is the like blueprint for each flask and then all you got to do is just change the title at the top for which type of flask you want. So if we're looking at Bismuth for example, um, this would be a situation where I would consider not worth crafting because there seems to be a handful of these that exist on the market for 2040C. Not really worth going for that. But let's check out the Granite Flask. The Granite Flask looks to be in a similar situation. About 40C, 50C, not super great. Still tons of profit. I, I promise you can craft this under 40C. I promise. But then if you look at a little bit more specified one, a little bit more specific, you have Stibatine, or sorry, Stibnite, which is a very widely used flask because it gives you more evasion. That's really, really good for armor stacking, evasion stackers. Um, and this one looks like the, uh, the market's pretty dry. There's only a handful. One of these has tier one armor. This one has resistance. So if you craft one that has evasion or resistance or attack speed or movement speed, not armor, then you could put yours on the market and undercut people by a pretty significant amount. And you can, and you can, uh, look to gain some heavy profit from this for sure. And let's go ahead and buy one now. So... All you really gotta do to buy a to buy a flask for crafting is simply type the name in. Item level 84 is the uh, minimum item level for all of the mods to be tier one, and then I'll put like a, a max price of five chaos. And oh yeah, you probably should also do no uh, uniques because there's a lot of unique flasks that are cheap. And then you just sort it by uh, time listed. This guy listed this two minutes ago, so hopefully he is uh, awake at his computer ready to trade. You love to see it. Check it. Item level 85. Stib Knight. 
Very cool, thank you, sir. And we're just gonna go ahead and get started rolling here. Um, it does not matter at all for you to put glass blowers bobbles because the duration of the flask has no effect to mage blood users. So don't do that. Um, and then simply all you're gonna do is start rolling. All you're looking for is a good tier one suffix that gives you power, such as attack speed, whatever. Corrupted blood's not good. Um, immunities are not great. Some people use them, but usually you, you would like to get power on your flasks and then get your immunities elsewhere. Okay, well here we have the increased effect prefix, so we might as well augment it, see if we get a good suffix, and we get a tier 3 attack speed, so that's no good. Wow, check it out. So we got move, we got tier 1 move speed increased effect, so now we're just going to throw some of these on there. Now we're just going to see how many enkindling orbs it takes to get our increased effect. Wow, there we go. Like five orbs. And these are pretty cheap, so we, we got the perfect 70% roll as well. So here we have a, a flask that is ready to be used by a Mageblood user who would like more evasion and movement speed. Um, so now let's just go ahead and check on the market again and see if there are any of these that exist right now. It looks like there are not any movement speed ones. So we're going to list ours pretty high up there. We're going to start off with 100 chaos. But that might be a bit of a strong ask, but we will see what happens. And then I'm going to move on to the next craft. I think I'm going to do a ruby flask for the next one. 5 chaos for item level 85 ruby flask. Thank you, sir. Ooh, we got a perfect roll of the 60% armor. And we got the increased effect. Very nice. So this is a great flask so far. And let's see if we can get that increased effect on the Enkindling Orb. 68%, not bad. Um, whenever you're rolling the Enkindling Orb, I usually like to re-roll until I get above 66. Um, I think people would probably prefer that. But this flask is pretty much good to go. Let's see if there's any rubies that exist right now with the armor. There's an attack speed, attack speed, movement speed, evasion for 165 chaos, which is crazy. Movement speed, attack speed, increased movement speed. So there's none with armor. There's one here for an exalt with armor. So we're going to list ours for, once again, 100 chaos. Let's see if that works. Jade seems to be pretty worth it. A little bit less uh, potential profits, but still, still definitely a good option. Alright, we got one for 3 chaos. And let's start crafting. Tier 1 armor. Increased effect. There we go, baby. Looking good, looking good. Let's get that enkindling orb on there. 62 is not good enough. 67, ah, it's right on the borderline. I'll let it ride, I guess. So there we go. Um, you know, pretty good, pretty good. Let's see if there's any others that exist with armor right now. Movement speed, here's one for armor for 60 chaos. So we're gonna undercut him a little bit for 55 chaos. Wow, and look at that. We have a sale for one of our flasks already. That took about five minutes. <laughs> uh, he's buying this one, the Ruby Flask, for 100 chaos. 100 chaos. I'm not crazy. I've done this several times. This actually works. This is proof. This is proof of it working. And what? so what just happened, right? I think I spent like 100 or maybe 150 alterations, which is... Uh, like 30 chaos or something or less than that and we crafted a total of three flasks one of which is probably not that expensive the other one is likely going to be also 100 chaos we sold one for 100 chaos and it took us about five minutes i didn't cut at all i mean i'm gonna obviously edit the video but seriously since i started to the point we're at right now where the flask sold it's been about five or maybe ten minutes that is insane that's crazy. And it's, this is not the first time I've done this either. Like I said, I've done this several times. This shit works, you guys. There are Giga Chads who, are, who have no time to craft flasks, purchasing flasks for 100 chaos because it's perfect for their Mage Blood build or something. Who knows? This shit works. 
give it a try. Uh, and I hope I hope it helps. Thanks for watching.